here at the U.S. Gymnastics Championships and we get to watch the best in the world do what she does better than anyone else. The standings after night one, Biles on top, then Suni Lee, Jordan Childs, Jay Carey, and the rest. And we also begin to find out who will represent the U.S. at the Olympics, assuming Simone will be there as well. Terry Gannon, Nastia Lukin, Tim Daggett, and Andrea Joyce with you. Guys, it is night two, national championships on the line, and Simone starts here in rotation number one on balance beam. Tell you what, it's an honor. It really is. It sounds corny to say that. It's a, a privilege and an honor to be in the arena in the time of Simone Biles and get to witness this greatness. And she's going for her seventh national title here tonight, but this is far greater than just being here at the national championships. I mean, she has just set herself so far apart from the rest of the field, and not just on the competition floor here in Texas, but the entire universe. <laughs> here she goes. First combination right here, three elements in a row. Oh. And she was supposed to do those two leaps together with that pipe back somersault. So she'll lose just a little bit of extra bonus, but. Nobody in the world has ever done a dismount this well. She could do an extra full twist. She doesn't need to. <laughs> One down, three to go. Great to have the fans <laughs> back, too, at these events and all eyes during that entire routine, certainly on Simone Biles, kicking it off here. Night two leading the way after the opening night at the national championships. So, a lot of people don't like this skill, but if you're gonna do it, you gotta do it like Simone Biles. Look at the speed. <laughs> it's unreal. I mean, that's what she does just throughout the entire routine. This combination, three elements in a row, back handspring, back layout, back layout. And you know, she does every single skill so well. And I think people don't realize actually how difficult some of these elements are, including this dismount, two back handsprings into a full twisting double back Tim as you mentioned capable of doing a whole nother full rotation which she actually performed last year at the world championships and that, she was the first to do it that's it scary the Biles. that is just a scary <laughs> thought isn't it yeah. yeah adding that full twist is next level Laurent and Cecile Landy her coaches now heading for another Olympics won five medals in Rio four of them gold and on beam it was a bronze so one rotation down, you still have floor to come, uneven bars, you got the vault to come tonight. As we watch the best in America compete at the highest level in this country. And Jordan Childs, a little bit earlier, her effort on balance being the 20-year-old from Vancouver, Washington, who's now moved to Texas to train alongside Simone Biles. And you know, every single Thing that she has done this entire year has proved that that move to Texas to train with Simone and of course coaches Laurent and Cecile has been a hundred percent worth it the level of confidence that she has had really all year long but especially here at these national championships has, has really just been I think eye-opening for everybody yeah, you know, she, she said over and over again that she lost the love for the sport. She made the move, the transition. She says she loves going to the gym. She loves her teammates. She loves her coaches. She did make a modification early on in the routine. Night one in her major series where she does three acrobatic elements in a row. She chose not to do it because she was a little off and it was a great choice.
we talk about Simone doing such difficult skills. Well, Jordan actually doing the exact same dismount that Simone did, just a different entry. So she's going to do a round off on the beam. Full twisting, double back. Wow. Spectacular. Just a handful of gymnasts in the world are capable of doing that. All around silver medal at the 2017 U.S. Championships and a whole lot of momentum right now. Made a statement with a win at the Winter Cup in February and then in his second right behind Simone Biles recently at the U.S. Classic and that number in green, which is good. 14.05, the number for Jordan Child. And a better score than she got night one in competition by just a little bit, but better. Which came in third on night one. It was Simone Biles who led the way on beam night one. Just a little indication of what the scores mean to help you out. Green is excellent, yellow safe, and red below average. That's based on recent major international meets. So one down, three to go for Simone here in Fort Worth. Can jump over to vault right now and in this first rotation Jade Carey the 21 year old from Phoenix who has already mathematically clinched an individual spot in the Olympics in Tokyo that was via that apparatus World Cup series so we're going to see her on vault she's got one of the spots there are four team spots that compete as a team and then the U.S. has also earned another individual spot it all come down to the trials in a few weeks but she's going to go. Absolutely, and you know, it's it's not just about the Olympic trials. Every single competition really matters. The selection committee, of course, watching every time that they are out there on the competition floor, but you have to have a little bit of confidence knowing that you're going into the Olympic trials with an Olympic spot already secured. And the U.S. ball champ back in 2017, silver in 2019, the last time the championships were held. First of two vaults. Oh, God. Huge double full. She is capable of doing much more difficult. But again, because we are still a few weeks away from the Olympic trials and the Olympic Games, you don't quite have to be at your prime throwing all the most difficult skills here. She typically does an extra half turn at the end of this. Look at how high she flies. Beautiful. Spotting the ground right there. A couple weeks ago, she was co competing at the U.S. Classic and kind of stung her ankle on her first vault. That's the reason why she's decided not to do her most difficult stuff here in Texas. Second oldest of four children in the family and coached by her dad, Brian. Committed eventually to go to Oregon State to compete there, but after a trip to Tokyo. Her parents owned a gym when she was little, so she said she was born playing in a gymnastics gym. Happens a lot more than you would imagine. And pretty much the same exact landing because once again, she is capable of doing an even more difficult vault, adding a, another twist to that. All smiles after the two efforts, though, with her dad. Another one of the top names here in second after the opening night, Suni Lee, the 18-year-old from St. Paul, Minnesota. And for more on her, we check in with Andrea. Well, Terry, this weekend has definitely been a big, bright spot in Suni's year. After battling back from a foot injury and losing both an aunt and an uncle to COVID, here in Fort Worth, her best friend is in the stands to watch her compete in person for the first time in three years. That would be her dad, John. In fact, the entire Lee family did make the trip, driving in from Minnesota. Soon he was beaming all week, anticipating their arrival. Now, you might recall a couple of days before the 2019 Nationals, John had a bad accident, fell off a ladder, and was paralyzed. Well, we're happy to report that he has seen some improvement as part of an experimental program using electrical stimulation to help move his legs a bit. Soon he told us that he can actually give her gentle kicks and I talked to John earlier and he told me that being here to see SUNY compete is an incredible gift his message to her today compete for yourself and have a blast out there.
always tells her to go out and enjoy what you're doing and, and we've enjoyed following the progress and certainly hope for the best for John and great to see the family here. You know that year at the U.S. Championships too. She also had a fracture in her leg. Didn't really want to go to the championships. He helped talk her into it and she ends up winning a silver medal in the all around. Here she is, Suni Lee. She said she was depressed when they announced the postponement of the Olympic Games, a 10-year goal in preparation for that one moment in time. Wow, that was spectacular. The last time the Worlds happened, she was second best in the world, and that was way better than night one. Coming back from foot and ankle injuries and slowly coming back, but that was a statement maybe on floor just a moment ago. And Suni Lee with her family up there cheering and watching the 18-year-old who graduates high school this week as well. A lot going on. Hosting these U.S. championships, the number for Suni Lee, guys, 13.7. And you see that 10th in penalty. She stepped out of bounds on her last tumbling pass, but a really great score for Suni. So from an 18-year-old to a 32-year-old who is in this competition, what a story she is. Chelsea Memo, if you're a gymnastics fan, you know that name well. 2005 world all-around champ and also one of the stars in Beijing, a competitor and a teammate of yours, not Steve. Oh, absolutely. And this was just, has been so much fun to be able to watch her back out on the competition floor, truly doing this for the love of the sport, the amount of passion that she has for gymnastics and obviously being able to talk to her, you know, along this entire journey, it's, it's been so much fun. And, and I think really just truly an inspiration for so many, not just in the sport, you know, no matter what sport, no matter what you're doing in life, it is, she is proving to people that age is just a number. And I think inspiring not just the gymnastics community, yeah. but an, an entire generation. Big part of the reason she's doing it too, and, and she's the mother of two, son Dashiell and mm -hmm. daughter Andrielle. <laughs> Corey there, her husband, watching from the stands. And her dad, Andy, is coaching her. So what a family story in the comeback. Nine years away from competition at this level and earlier tonight, her effort on balance beam. You know, it, everything about this whole entire comeback has been so impressive, but I think the most impressive thing for me is being able to see her back on, out on the competition floor and some of the skills that she is doing are actually, she's, the way she's doing is better and stronger than she ever did, even in 2008. Oh, you know, it started where she was just trying to get in shape after, after having a couple of kids, and it got more and more, pro it progressed more and more, but she said everybody in her circle got to the point of her deciding to really make a comeback before she did. <laughs> Described the journey as an absolute joy that she is loving. Difficult skill right here, standing Arabian. 
Oh. Oh, that's a shame. You know, she, the skill itself is very difficult, and she's been performing it at the end of her beam routine, which makes it that much harder when you're already exhausted and, yeah. and have done a whole beam routine of skills. Used to do it at the beginning of her routine back in 2008. She made that night one, though. Just the dismount, double pike. Huge. Gosh. Wow. Crowd's been hanging on everything she's done, too. They know the story well. Knowledgeable crowd here. The gymnastics crowd coming to the national championships in Fort Worth and following that story of Chelsea Memel. The fall, yes, but that dismount the effort overall and pretty inspirational watching this journey. And in, I think it's an overused word journey when, when athletes come to it is for her. It really is. 12.15, the number on balance beam for Chelsea Memel back after nine years away from competition at this high level. So we head to that second rotation here, night number two at the national championships when we continue. Simone Biles, the leader after the opening night at the national championships. One rotation in here on night two. Terry Gananoski, Luke and Tim Daggett, and Andrea Joyce with you. Simone looking for her seventh U.S. all-around title. Take you back to what's taken place already and her effort, guys. She opened up on balance beam. Yeah, absolutely, and she opened up in a, in a pretty big way, but nothing surprising. You know, every single thing that Simone does not just here in competition not just in training but every time she goes out on the floor it is just absolute perfection you know you can't help but look at her the people in the audience and even the other athletes the coaches everybody wants to watch and learn this is her biggest test of the routine three elements in a row and it is just like she is perfect the scary thing is, she won all those gold medals five years ago in Rio. She could do the exact same routines this summer in Tokyo, and she'd win again without question. And she has pushed the envelope and has gotten way better. Well, not only does she do extremely difficult elements, but it's, it's the way that she performs each of those elements. and. It is done with such ease and such, it's so effortless, you know? And I think a lot of people, we, we've been trying to think about, look at this dismount, full twisting, double back, capable of doing a, another twist to that, but doesn't even need to do that because she is so far ahead of the field. Think about what she did in Rio, those five medals and the four gold medals. Took a little time off after that, came back. New coaches, Laurent and Cecile Landy, and based in Spring, Texas, to make a run at Tokyo and and now after that delay of a year we are approaching the Tokyo Olympics and guys she hasn't settled in with those routines I mean she just keeps taking it higher and higher more difficult every time out it seems and, and, and speaking of new routine she actually has a brand new floor routine has performed it one time already but was on Dancing with the Stars a few years ago and so her Dancing with the Stars partner <laughs> Sasha Farber actually choreographed this added a little Da Latin dance moves. First time for that. I, th I would say so for imagine, her at least. Right? Yeah. yeah. Timmy, think back to night one, two. She was the best on, well, three of the four vault, beam, and floor. And she was solid on the fourth one on uneven bars as well. Take a look at this opening tumbling pass. Two flips, three twists, never been done before. It is called the Biles. Wow.
<laughs> the greatest of all time. Absolutely astonishing. If you don't think that that's hard, then you really don't understand gymnastics because... How many people out there do you think actually don't think that's hard <laughs> after watching that? I don't that? know. I don't know. It's. I mean, the pro this is the problem, Terry. Everything she does, even the things that she's the only one in the world that does them, she makes them look so darn easy. It's not. So speaking about, speaking of looking easy, this is that opening tumbling pass called the bios again was the first person in the world to do it at the world championship so that is why it is named after her look at the height that she gets <laughs> it is just incredible the two flips and three twists and somehow just about as close to a perfect landing look there's the second one one more still flipping got the ground with her eyes oh it's got to be such a kick to have different things named after you to be the first to do it at world championships at an Olympic. You think she still gets a kick out of it? I would say yes. I mean, whether it's named, whether it's being named after her, but I think just actually being able to perform those skills, right? It's, it's a challenge. It's a test. And, and she is already so far above the rest of the competition field that she has to only compete against herself. Trying to win her seventh U.S. all-around title tonight. Kind of assume that she's going to get that done. Nobody's done that women's side before. All right, over to Suni Lee, the teenager who <laughs> graduates high school this week. And one of the top names here was second best back in 2019. That was a good ball right at the end of it. She had a little bit of a leg separation. But this isn't her strongest fault. Where she really shines is going to be on the next event, the uneven bars, where, it, in my opinion, and, and Tim, correct me if I'm wrong, but if she hits the routine that she is capable of, she, without a doubt, she is the best in the world I on the uneven so. bars. I would say so, yes. Over to Balance Beam with another young star, 17-year-old from Overland Park, Kansas, Leanne Wong, who we saw break through back in March of 2019 winning what's called the American Cup, but also the U.S. Junior Champ 2018 in the all-around. Good combination right here. Oh, she was off a little bit to the side. Her parents say she's such a perfectionist. She actually gets mad at them if they give her too many compliments. Oh, and that was a huge error yes. right there. It was supposed to do that. Do that. So, yeah. I'm not sure what the judges would even do for that. The way gymnastics is, though, if there's a mistake. They're getting a deduction, and I would say that that will be a pretty big one. Also going to have to be worried about time, right? Because she, she added a skill in. It's supposed to connect it into this skill right here. Really just seems a little hesitant throughout this entire routine. Remembering. Might be a little picky, but the beam only four inches wide. Triple twist. Well, she survived, but that gave, I'm sure, her heart was in her throat, and both of her coaches on the floor, Armini Baratien, I'm sure that scared her a lot. Came in third on beam the last time the U.S. championships were held and came into their rotation in fifth overall. Simone Biles, the number for her floor exercise. So you see that difficulty of a 6.8 and the execution is the second score judged out of a 10.0, so. And for Suni Lee, 8.9 for the execution, 14.3 overall in that yellow, that, that safe area, kind of middle ground in terms of the scores and judging them up against the major recent international events. 
fourth place after this opening rotation tonight and five rotations overall tonight plus night one jade carey the 21 year old from arizona she has come so far on this event the pandemic actually helped her a lot on bars hoping to do a big connection right here see her dad getting ready to spot her but was not meant to be tonight did it day one she will lose deduction for not connecting it but she will lose a little bit of bonus beautiful hmm. Just spectacular improvement for her. And remember, she is already, Simone Biles, she's going to go to the Olympics. But it's not a lock yet. This young lady right here, she has mathematically guaranteed a spot to go to Tokyo. And she could, if she comes in the top two at the Olympic trials, she could move from that spot onto the team. Four team members will be chosen. That top two at the Olympic trials in a few weeks, they're locked. They, they lock up spots, but then two by the committee selected, three and four there. Jade Carey has already wrapped up an individual spot, and the U.S. has earned another individual spot. You know, and we, we've talked about this, I think, all week long. If anybody was ever confused on how you make the Olympic team in, in the past... <laughs> And you were confused about that. Well, good luck but, trying but to figure this out. This graphic definitely helped. We gave you helped. a graphic, though. <laughs> we did. But there is also, it, it's a puzzle piece because you have those four team spots and the team finals, three athletes up on each event. Three scores have to count. And Grace McCallum, an 18-year-old from Minnesota, one of those names in the mix. Absolutely. Suni Lee, obviously, Jordan Childs, and Grace is among them. I would say... There's about nine people that have a really good shot at going to Tokyo. Going to be a lot of disappointment there, though. Two weeks ago, I think he was at 12. He was at 12. Absolutely, I remember. You're narrowing it down. <laughs> I, I have. Yes, I have. That was two weeks ago. <laughs> Grace actually had a kind of a really rough meet in day one here, which is so unusual for her. This is a really big. Gorgeous, a leap into two acro elements. I got to talk to her coach, Sarah, a few weeks ago at the Classic. She's had plenty of injuries throughout her career and she said you know this is the first time i think that she has actually been so healthy not even a single ache or pain which is very difficult to be able to go into not even just a competition but a day of training not having any aches and pains well, i never had that how about you <laughs> not. there you go grace really solid had the second highest score Night one on beam to the goat. And another really strong exercise there. I love the fact that everybody knows who you're talking about, right? Like other sports, you can have the argument, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kobe, whatever. Yeah. Here, there's really no discussion. Well, if, if somebody is going to disagree, then they, they don't know what they're talking about. That's just what it comes down to. The number for Jade Carey, you saw that in red, but Leanne Wong, 12 point seven for the effort on balance beam as we continue here night two two rotations down for simone biles and the top names in fort worth national championships continue in a moment nbc inside dickie's arena brand new building here this is one of the first major events being held in this arena grace mccallum the number guys on balance being 14-2. Yeah, it's a great score. Exactly what you got night one. A look at Jordan Childs in third after the opening rotation and continues her hot streak. Recent wins and second place finishes in events right behind Simone Biles. She trains with Simone every day. And for more on Jordan, here's Andrea. 
Okay, Terry, we all know that the road to the Olympics sometimes reads like a suspense novel. It's full of twists and turns in the story. Well, we still don't know how Jordan's story will play out, but her mom has taken her journey. Her mom, Gina, has taken her journey, and she's turned it into a children's book, complete with a happy ending. It's called Dream Big Little Chick, and it's about Chick which is uh, her nickname, Jordan's nickname, and her quest to make the Animal Olympics. It's touching and inspirational, I have to tell you, and it's all about not giving up on your dreams. Gina told me that she wanted to write a book for years, but she kept the project a secret from her family, and when she presented it to Jordan, Jordan got very emotional. She cried, not because of the story's content, but because she was so proud that her mom had fulfilled her own dream. As Jordan continues chasing hers, we will see her on the floor when we return to our coverage of night two at the U.S. National Championships. Rotation two of four continues here in Fort Worth. We are in Texas, and some of the great names have come from this state. Simone Biles, of course, based in Spring, Texas. Kim Zemeskel, the 91 World All-Around Champ. Carly Patterson, 2004 Olympic All-Around Champ. Parker, well represented there by that name on the list. And then, of course, Simone with those national championships, 13 through 16, and then 18 and 19. Look at that, number seven tonight. There's something about Texas. Something in the <laughs> there, are, there are so many programs down here, Terry, and so many little girls doing gymnasts even now that are looking up to and idolizing those names that we just saw. So many of the crowd tonight, too. You, you just look up and around and all eyes on Simone Biles and the others who will be watched in Tokyo later this summer about the great names too i mean it, so many people want to come and see her right now who knows how long it will last in her mid-20s at the, the other night ladanian tomlinson here bringing in his daughter one of the great running backs in the history of the nfl and you get calls all the time about were you there last week when she, simone did this or that yes pretty, pretty Sim cool simone has actually said that she's thinking about potentially even going on to paris 2024 her, both of her coaches are from france and she as, a said, specialist yes, a, so, yeah. as a specialist yes but you know what if she's in as a specialist that could change on a dime do you it, do you think that's realistic do you think that's possible uh, absolutely i think it, whatever she sets her mind to do i i think that any of that is possible i mean we talk about it in 2016 at the olympics she was so incredible there could have done the same exact routine she did five years ago here and still be on top guys i just want to update people on uh, what's taking place here this week with another one of the stars from the rio games part of that olympic gold medal and laurie hernandez in warm-ups the other night on beam that dismount and then they wrapped that knee and she tried to go and was not able to do it so her comeback bid involving the national championships here cut short at least in terms of this competition now she has the ability to put in a petition to the olympic trials i don't know if that has occurred yet i don't know if it will but that's a possibility kara aker now the 18 year old from grain valley missouri in sixth place after night one up on balance beam this is a really big routine for her. The way that she just moves from one element into another, into a dance element, everything just flows. Absolutely stunning. Remember, we keep talking about this plus one spot that Team USA has, and this is a routine, an athlete, who could fill that spot because of this event. Gorgeous. Oh, just so beautiful and such great rhythm. When she is on and does a routine like this, it almost makes you forget that she's on the balance beam as if she's just performing it on the floor exercise. Yeah, like you, like you said, Nasia, when she's on, she is so very much on. 2018 World, she had the 
second highest qualifying score, finished out of the medals in both worlds that she's competed in. And she is the Pan American gold medalist on this event. The dismount right here. Combination into a two and a half twist. Oh, I don't know, maybe, what do you think? Maybe the best I've ever seen her do. Absolutely. Trying to send a message too that maybe that individual spot could be hers for balance beam and what she could do at the Olympics. She was first back at the junior championships in 2017 and then second best in 2018-19 and that was quite an effort. And here's that dismount. So, you know, I, I say she performs like she is on the floor exercise. Well, this is something that a lot of people do as a tumbling pass. Round effect, yeah. handspring, two and a half twist. Spots the ground. Stunning. Yeah, that was great. So we get that number in a moment. It should be a good one. But before she went, Kayla DiCello, the 17-year-old, another very young, talented gymnast in her effort up on beam in ninth place, heading into night two. Eighth place after the opening rotation here, but that was shocking. This happened a little while ago. I, I, I can't believe she did that. It's really a very easy element for her. You know, I, I guarantee you if you asked her how many times she's done that in training, <laughs> I, I, I don't even know if she's ever done that. Maybe when she was Maybe, learning it. <laughs> correct, but not in training, getting ready for yeah. the national championships. Oh, boy. I mean, right, yeah, they started off that way. So over to Jordan Childs in third after the opening rotation tonight. Remember, the numbers from the other night do carry over. So it's been Biles, Suni Lee, and Jordan Childs. And we heard from Andrea, her parents up there, mom, and the book, and the inspiration. You know, you, you know you believe in dreams when, when you name your kid after Michael Jordan. <laughs> MJ. That's for sure. You, you're thinking big. She's got more than 50 pairs of Jordans at home. She said five years ago, I watched the girls in Rio and I cried. They were all my friends. She wants Tokyo. performances like this two more days at the Olympic trials then she is well on her way to Tokyo Tim hasn't done she hasn't done anything recently that would make you believe she wouldn't be no ab going. absolutely not she looks the thing about her is she looks so confident and her coaches said when she first got there that she laughed she didn't have any confidence at all that was the most important thing to start with <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she said, Tim, to your point, you know, her coach Cecile said when she came back from quarantine, though, there was a switch in her. She said, I have one year and I don't want to have any regrets. And I don't think she's going to be regretting <laughs> anything that she has done. Here's that final tumbling pass, a double pike. Hot back. She stayed in bounds. Yeah. Stayed up on her toes. If she had put her heels down, that's it might a better have been close. move, by the way. Absolutely. <laughs> to know to do that. 
<laughs> just sinks lower in the seat. I can't watch. Yep. All right. Now I can sit up and cheer. Yeah, parents. Oh, it's got to be so hard, man. At this level. So a couple of rotations in here. Night two, the national championships continue from Fort Worth in a moment. Events left for the great Simone Biles. She'll be going to vault next. And that lead, it's up to over four points here. Over SUNY Lee, Jordan Childs, Jade Carey, Emma Malibuyo. Top five here at night two. Back with the start of rotation number three here in Fort Worth. Michaela Skinner just outside the top ten after the two rotations. The 24-year-old who has spent the last three years as a star at the University of Utah. A couple of NCAA all-around runner-up positions and back to the elite level to try to make a run at the Olympics and now on vault. And this is a great event and their next event for Another great event for her, so she can move up quite a bit. And that was good. You know, she didn't quite get that block off of the table like she did night one, but extremely difficult vault. Not many people in the world can do that, and if she can find herself on that Olympic team in Tokyo, without a doubt, will make that event final. So a half onto the table, and you see, look at her hips. You want to see them completely open all the way. A little bit of a pike down, but significantly has improved, I would say, the last time that she competed this fall in the past had kind of turned really quickly off the table. But so what this vault has going for it, though, is it starts from a 16.0. The only other person, I believe, competing this tonight is Simone Biles. It's the highest score. But, of course, Simone Biles can do a 16.6. That famous Yurchenko double pike. I don't believe she's going to do it tonight, though. So the number, and even 15, this opening effort on vault. She was second best on night one to Simone Biles on this event. It's not unheard of, but that transition after being a star in college back out to the elite level, it's a different kind of uh, transformation or, or challenge, I should say. Without question, it's also a very difficult vault. It's called an Aminar. Really good. Really, really good. So for those of you that might not know everything about gymnastics, only some of the gymnasts are doing two vaults. And the reason they're doing that is at major championships, world championships, and the Olympics this summer, to make it into the event finals, you have to do two different vaults, and they have to be from what they're called two different families. They can't be related at all. All right, over to Suni Lee now, who has been right there behind Simone Biles, just about four points off the lead, uneven bars. And this routine right here outside of Simone's pretty much every <laughs> <laughs> event is one of my favorite pieces of gymnastics. In the world, for me, it just keeps. Oh, boy. That was probably a good decision there, though. She was supposed to connect right into this. Which, once again, she only loses bonus. A whole bunch of combinations again right here. Oh, and another connection that she was supposed to do. It's still phenomenal. And it's still world class, and it could still make the Olympic finals. But again, that is something that she does so well. Great dismount right there. Something she does so well is she is really able to feel kind of the swing, the bar, and, and make that decision so quickly. And everything in that entire bar routine is so fast that being able to decide, should I connect this or should I not? And that's based on what she's feeling in the moment? Absolutely. And that's, that really comes from a lot of training, a lot of experience, feeling the bar. But take a look at this. Look how high she gets. Her hips completely open.
And so she goes down to the low bar, full twisting, pack salto, and she is supposed to connect. And she was a little bit far. Oh, Oops. actually hit her feet on the ground, so that's going to be a deduction there. Yeah, yeah, it looked like the judge on the left of your screen. She kind of followed her feet, and she's just so phenomenal. The routine she did night one, the most difficult routine I think ever done on bars, had a maximum starting score of 16.8. This one will be 16.45 maybe, somewhere around there. Because of the changes, those yes, decisions. Exactly. She just didn't get set after that major release from the high bar to the low bar. She wasn't ready and wasn't able to get her feet onto the bar quick enough. Still, you expect a high score, correct? Oh, yes. The highest we'll see tonight. Yep, there you go. Suni Lee, as we move on here, rotation number three, night two at the national championships. Hey. Watching Katie Ledecky race to become the first American woman to win five gold medals at a single Olympic Games. Simone Miles could do that as well. Olympics beginning July 23rd, live from Tokyo on NBC. And I think it's safe to assume that Simone will take that top spot at the Olympic trials. But what other names will be there alongside? Suni Lee certainly one of those that you would think 14.9 not the highest on bars tonight yeah she made who a said it was going to be the highest i, I think, think i did it. yes <laughs> <laughs> riley mccusker early 15.1 so over to jade carey short time ago in fourth place after the second rotation and her effort on balance beam. Jade has always been so powerful in both vault for exercise. But Tim, as you mentioned, just the time that she had during the pandemic when she was able to get back in the gym, really spent so much time both on the uneven bars, the balance beam. A little bit of an error there. Having already secured her spot to go to the Olympic Games, and you know, she did secure her spot on vault. She will be able to do the all around in Tokyo. Once again, we've talked about how confusing <laughs> all the rules are, both the selection, this extra spot that Jade was able to secure through the World Cup circuit. And that was great. You know, again, not her strongest event. We're going to see her in the floor exercise next. And I mean, the, the, just wait also till Olympic trials. She has been doing some incredible gymnastics here that she might not compete on floor, but it is to come. It's going to be really difficult picking that team. We're going to see Simone Biles fall. <laughs> not yet, though. In a little bit. You got some work to do there. Back in Fort Worth, night two of the national championship. Simone Biles about to go on a vault, and that's where she made a lot of news just a couple of weeks ago at the U.S. Classic, guys, and once again doing something that no female gymnast has ever done. You still to wrap your heads around, Nastia, what she did on vault there. And, and, you know, we got to see this in person, and it is just mind-blowing. A Yurchenko double pike. No female gymnast in the entire world has ever done this. Just absolutely incredible. That's three times around. Three complete flips, and she makes it easily. Don't and, believe and that she's planning on doing it tonight, but well, you never know with Simone. Hasn't warmed it up, right? She didn't do it on night one and has not warmed it up, so we don't know if we'll see it tonight, but we will definitely see it in the future. But she just, I mean, she's the main one, but just one team member. You look ahead to the Olympics, guys, and, and I mean, 
obviously they'll go to Tokyo as the favorites, but so many names to choose from. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Since the Classic, I would say Team USA as a whole looks much better, much more confident. And, you know, they're obviously, they are the dominant force in gymnastics. But I'll say that Simone Biles is even more dominant than Team USA. You could put her on a number of teams, and that team would go into the Olympics as the favorite. Wow, that's a state. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. <laughs> no matter what team she were. Wow. All right, we'll see. So the vault next for Simone Biles as we continue from the national championships next for Texas. So it is Jordan Childs who is still in third place now after two rotations tonight and six rotations overall getting set on a vault. We've got Childs there and Simone Biles as well. Her next apparatus is a vault. Here we go. She has just been killing it on this vault. She'll actually perform two, but this first one, really dynamic. Really good. Once again, capable of doing much more difficult, adding a half twist, which when you say just adding a half twist, it doesn't really sound like it's that much more difficult, but it really is. But look at this. Great block off of the table, beautiful form. A little bit of a cross leg just at the very end. Spots the ground. Yeah, it's great, tremendous. Really gets a good block. You get your arms back there. You see that table can hardly take the pressure. Kind of catapults her into the air. Great look. She has been phenomenal. And look at that execution score. Mm. That's huge. 9.5 out of a 10.0, so only had five tenths deduction. Mom is watching, is able to watch. Yeah, on vault, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. you hear watch vault. <laughs> <laughs> Happens pretty quick. <laughs> Here's that second vault. Totally different. No round off onto the board. Going in face forwards. Really good. I think she's capable of doing another full twist on that. Yeah. She, she can't do that, though, and make an event finals because the second part of the vault would be the same. So she would have to upgrade her first vault. Which and she's capable of. Absolutely. And then she could do another full twist there. And that's very finals worthy absolutely. at the Olympic Games if she does that. And she actually said that this was just a little sneak peek at what's to come at trials. So I'm sure she's one step ahead of you, Tim. So an upgrade <laughs> maybe at trials in a few weeks. But gorgeous. Gorgeous form in the air. Body position. Hips are open. Great landing. Yeah, she does. She does what you're supposed to do. Make it, do really tough stuff and make it look easy. So 14.65, the average of the two. And again, difference between the all around and the individual apparatus event. Final, Chelsea Memel now ready to go. Yep, 2005 world all around champ and family watching. <laughs> With her dad coaching. Night one, these championships did a, a double twist, and this is what I'm talking about when I say it was even better it was. than she ever competed it back in 2008. Oh, uh, yeah, a little bit high on the table, and because of that, she wasn't able to get the same bounce in. And that really hurts when you come in short. She has a bad ankle already. And she's talked about how important it's been to limit her training, do smart training, because she's 32 years old, mother of two, making a comeback after nine years away. And she said, my body can only take so much. You see, she just doesn't get quite the block off of the table. Mm. And the rotates a little bit. She kind of like skims off the table as opposed to really getting into it so that she can, you know, block and, and shoot herself straight up. But by the way, just still 
so impressive to be able to do this after not performing really any kind of gymnastics, but especially a skill like this, as I mentioned, night one. You know what it's like to go out there and compete at the highest level, the Olympics, all that pressure. Can you imagine doing it after being away from the sport that long? Absolutely not. And that's, that's kind of what I say. She is truly inspiring so many people. That, you know, I don't think anybody really would have thought this was possible. Even when she started training and then said she was going to compete, a lot of people were like, but why? You know, why do you? And she just truly loved it. It was a challenge. She has a passion for the sport, of course, but it has been just such a joy to be able to watch, even when she doesn't perform, you know, her best, and, and we know she is capable of doing better. So now to a 24-year-old about to go on vault. First of two. Wow. <laughs> Ho hum. You know, it's it's just absolutely incredible. I think a lot of people think it's just truly just the power that she gets, but it, it is the perfect technique that actually really sets her apart. Look at the height that she gets off of the table, the full extension in her body spots the ground. And by the way, the distance as well. You yeah, know, it's, it, it, it's, exactly. it's just a little bit of everything, or a lot, a lot of everything. That camera angle we had, and here, it just shows you how far she travels. Yeah. I mean, the vault's not even in frame there. Wow. <laughs> it is just spectacular. You know, and we, we constantly talk about her power, but the th and she's got as much as anyone has ever had, but she also has unbelievable technique. Most gymnasts in the world that do that vault, they start twisting while they're still on the table, which is a deduction and makes it harder to get the height she gets. She does everything right. She's going to fly even higher on this one. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I mean, before she even lands, it is just, it's, it's, you can't compare her to anybody or anything. The closest thing to that that has ever been was Michaela Maroney. And she was state of the art in Absolutely. her own time. Michaela Maroney, of course, part of a gold medal winning Olympic team. She's won a couple of world championships for the USA on vault. But look, she just keeps going up. One other thing I forgot about Michaela, she was famous for not impressed, the not impressed face. Yes. Look at this. Just, once again, just performs it with such ease. Everything she does is effortless. There's the average, 15, 4, 7, 5. Whether you play it in real time or slow it down, you, you appreciate different things. The first time around, you just shake your head and go, what, what did I just see? And then every position in the air, you, you gain an appreciation for where she is in certain times. So one event left for Simone Biles as she continues to lead here, looking for win number seven at the national championships in the all event. Man Wong will share a seventh place after a couple of rotations tonight. 17-year-old from Kansas. a bit sketchy on that landing. Glad she got that around to her feet.
Struggled a little bit there, but just absolutely gorgeous artistry, the choreography. And another one of those young, talented gymnasts here competing in Fort Worth. Leanne Wong will get the number on her and continue here on night two. That's Paul, Paul Appel, too, stars in that, who I went to great school with, too. So, Oh, very cool. That promo, our favorite part of the show. <laughs> Morgan Hurd, who famously won that 2017 World All-Around title and wearing the glasses, Tim. Yeah, and you know, she said throughout her career she tried contacts, but the chalk dust would get in her eyes and it was a mess. One would pop out, she'd have to put them back in with chalk on her hands, so she went to a strap. Trying to come back from some injuries and get back to that form that won her that all-around title a few moments ago, her effort on balance beam. And it was a really rough routine, night one. And then fortunately for Morgan, right off the top here, the same element she came off night one. You know, we talk about the pandemic for all of these athletes, and this is an example, that extra year really hurt Morgan last year ago before everything shut down she won the american cup in the year of the olympics she was on that path and certainly one of the top names and it's been a rough, rough go lately for morgan heard 11-6 for the mistakes on balance beam how about emma malabuyo in fifth place after the second rotation and the 18 year old from flower mound texas just a little tidbit about her leotard her floor music is and breakfast at Tiffany's, so her ozone leotard was actually made to match. Nice. I'll tell you what, it's so wonderful to see her back out on the floor. She has just been plagued, not just recently, but really for the last three, four years with injury after injury. It's a delight to watch. <laughs> Cute, right? <laughs> like it? Really has been, as you mentioned, just such a had such a great junior career, and then on moved on to the senior level, and just didn't have the best luck with timing and injuries. But it's so great to see her back out here, healthy, doing well, at least getting able to finish her elite career and compete in the two biggest meets that she is planned and trained for her, her entire life. The U.S. Nationals and then the final Olympic trials. Happy for her. Originally from California, now training in Texas, Emma Malibuyo as we head to the final rotation here tonight. And the number four, Emma 13, four, five. And by the way, Simone Biles will finish up on uneven bars. One final rotation left here at the U.S. Championships. It is Simone Biles in the lead. Looking for win number seven in the all-around. Suni Lee in second. Jordan Childs rounding out the top three. Check out our Believe You Will performance presented by Guaranteed Rate and the great Simone Biles. And just from the beginning, I mean, we talk about this all night long, but not only does she do skills, nobody in the entire world like this one right here, the Biles, but she performs everything with such ease almost makes you think that you could also do that <laughs> nope not me that's hysterical <laughs> believe you will performance presented by guaranteed rate and she will finish up on uneven bars i want to take a look though at what riley mccusker in on uneven bars and that's what she's competing in in the 2017 arch champ and maybe making a bid to, to get an individual spot on the u.s olympic team well, she hoped to be in the hunt for the team, but had a big injury at the U.S. Classic when she landed a vault. But she is spectacular in her own right on bars.
This is the coolest combination right here. Gonna try to do three in a row. Now right back up again. Oh. <laughs> Does count a new one for her this year, double front half. That ankle doesn't look like it bothers her. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's Jade Carey's dad. She's down in Arizona now training. She's moved. New coaches, so happy. And 15.1. I mean, that's a number that would have won a silver medal at the last World Championships. Absolutely. And it beat out Suni Lee today, who got a 14.9. Suni did not have the same difficulty. You see that difficulty there, 6.4. Suni's difficulty today was only 6.2 because she missed those connections. She's capable of 6.8. But that, that's, that's a medal-worthy routine. That can get it done. And coming back off that injury. So pretty impressive what she did earlier tonight here. 19 years of age, originally from New Jersey. So we keep talking about those Olympic spots because certainly on the minds of athletes coming in the, these several weeks and less than three weeks away from the start of the Olympic trials, the top two, the Olympic trials, they're locks. They make the team. And then the next two spots are selected by the committee. Jane Carey's wrapped up an individual spot. She could still, if she's in the top two, make the team, for example, and then one more spot. Yeah, and you know, it really is going to come down to the Olympic trials. You know, every single competition obviously counts. They're, they're looking at everything and, and, and from the sense of consistency as well. You know, it's not just about delivering at the Olympic trials. Over the last even four or five years, the World Championships, other international competitions and those those two selections number three and four this very much factors into the choices the national championships jordan childs now uneven bars great handstand right there huge air Good combination right here Almost looked like he touched her on that. He didn't assist her, but it looked like he touched her. He did. That's going to be a huge deduction. Hopefully not. There you go, Jordan. Ah, <laughs> mom loves it. <laughs> yes. Halfway there, two more meets like this at the final Olympic trials, and she will be one of those four. Still really close, that race for second. She and Suni Lee behind Simone Biles. We'll see. Check the number here in a moment. But so good, the last couple of events that we have watched her. So let's take a look, see if he touched her. No, I nope. don't think so. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> so close. You know, it really kind of becomes habit. A lot of the coaches stand in between the bars like that, and and sometimes doing that too often, you have to remind yourself. But but obviously Laurent knows what he's doing. So she's about four tenths of a point behind Suni Lee going into this final rotation. Suni Lee will be on beam. So we wait for that number. And meanwhile, Chelsea Memel getting ready. World Uneven Mars champ back in 2003. And I'll tell you what, she got some major air day one. Ended up not being able to put the entire routine together. What did, what did she say, Nastia? The first day of competition? Yeah, she said she hadn't really done an entire routine together all at one time. And, and, and that's, you know, extremely difficult to obviously come out here in a competition and put that together when the nerves are high, when the pressure is high. You failed the quiz, by the I way. I failed the quiz. <laughs> I'm sorry. 14 6, the honey. Thanks, Tim. You, you Thank told you. Me, you told me the story. But the teacher didn't say there was going to be a quiz. Pop quiz. That is Chelsea now. 
<laughs> so the big release combo comes right off the top. Here we go. Oh. Husband and the kids trying to cheer her back on the bars. Her dad out there helping. She's voicing too much, too much to her dad, and it was just a little bit too much oomph. I think she'll do it again. I don't know, maybe not. No. No, she's not going to. And that's the same mistake she made night one. She's supposed to do a half turn at the end of that. And that's going to be a day for Chelsea Memo. I don't know about you guys, but I'm proud to know her. Hey guys, the opportunity to have your kids see you compete. You know, athletes talk about that and, and say, I wish that my kids could see me in my prime competing. And, and she's back here out competing against the very best. And they're in the stands to watch her. Disappointment there, but overall, some kind of experience and pretty inspirational. So, Simone Biles still to come. Uneven bar. She'll wrap it up with that. I'm Greg. Worth been great for Simone Biles. One event left. Doesn't like uneven bars. Not just doesn't like. <laughs> Hates. Okay, Hates use the word. Hates uneven bars. But she was second best on night one. And again, trying to wrap up her seventh U.S. all-around title. When she first came back, she said she was pushed by this couple here. Laurent especially, who is known to be a great bar coach. He coached Madison Koshin, who was world champion and part of the Olympic gold team in Rio. She said she had a major goal to get a lot better on it. And after she accomplished that, she, she said it kind of wasn't as fun anymore. <laughs> So far, so good. Struggled with this go right here. Not today. Beautiful. Big dismount. Two flips, two twists, one piece of air. <laughs> there you go. Seven-time national champion. History books again. <laughs> These championships have seen so many legends over the years, so many icons of the sport, but with seven titles now to her name, it's pretty safe to say that nobody has ever shined brighter on this stage. Well, that's for sure. She is something else, I'll tell you. Can you imagine if there was actually somebody to push her? I mean, she pushes herself. Well, she does. <laughs> you know? She certainly does and has done a great job with that. <laughs> it, it is fascinating, though, because any athlete needs another athlete to push them, and it seems like she doesn't. She, she just takes it to a new level all the time. Jordan Childs was very emotional from the moment she finished that bar routine. For her, halfway to her Olympic dream. Simone's already had one. The dream came true, and she's going to do it up even bigger this time. Here's that dismount. 
and we mentioned two flips, two twists. But again, take a look at how high she gets just above the bar. Look at this. Spots the ground. Easy <laughs> for her. <laughs> and we talk about the Olympics all the time. How about every year what she does at the World Championships? Most decorated gymnast, man or woman, and in the history of the World Championships, 25 medals, 19 of them gold. <laughs> that that is that's ridiculous. Come on. So we'll get that high number in a moment. But Leanne Wong in ninth, so top ten. Here after three rotations into the final rotation on ball. And that was a great vault. Beautiful form in the air. Just a little bit her, on the landing. Her shoulders were just over a bit, piked down. But again, you see that execution, 9.15 out of a 10.0. And Simone Biles, 14.7. 8.5 for execution, not even bars. Could have been a little higher, in my opinion. <laughs> we have 15.1, I think. For, yes, yeah. Right? The and highest. And SUNY was 14.9. Speaking of SUNY Lee, so it comes down to this for her, that race for second place, she would need a 14.2 or better, the number to wrap up second. Paying close attention to the family. Scored a 13.9, night one. But she can be better than that. Now on forward, the Barnett's MJ Fritcher. Excellent. So much harder than it looks. Just jump down off the couch right now and give that a try in the middle of your living room three times around. I'm gonna do it here in the booth. <laughs> Beautiful, neat connection there. So far, very calm. I'm confident. Mm, wow. Yeah, we're deducting now, Stia. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Oh. Mm. Almost perfect. So hard, though. The aerial cartwheel into two back layout step outs. Really good, really, really good. Been dealing with a lot of different things as we've said over and over through the competition. She thinks she'll be 100% by trials in just a little under three weeks. And I can't envision, I think you said this about Brody Malone last night, I can't envision a team going to Tokyo without Suni Lee. Really gorgeous combination, though. Watch this side aerial right into a layout step out, and then another one just a little bit off. Every time you add something on top of another one, it, it amplifies the errors. And here's that dismount. So same entry that we saw from Simone. Two back handsprings. Just a double twist. Little leg separation on the landing. But always great to end a two-day competition, especially national championships with the hit routine. And by the way, ending on beam is a little nerve-wracking. Yeah, starting or ending. And well, I think it's always nerve-wracking, but yeah. <laughs> I think starting or ending. One's worse than the other, though, right? So I, think, I think it depends on who you ask. I think yeah. for me, I, did, I didn't love ending on it, but... You'd, and you didn't mind starting. Correct. Hmm. Suni's talked about the time during the, the pandemic, too, said she's really grown up a lot and, and thought about and learned about the world well beyond gymnastics and, and has a different perspective on everything now. And maturity as well. Still just 18 years of age. So we wait for that number. 
Again, 14.2 is what she would need to get that second place. Jordan Childs has been in that race for second as well throughout the two nights. She's got to be three tenths better than she was night one. I think that was a three tenth better routine. Gonna have to wait. The judge is still deciding as we take you over to Jade Carey, who's in a share of fifth going into the final rotation. Getting set on floor. And she introduced in training a triple twisting double layout never been done before. Not planning on doing that tonight, but there's a possibility that she'll do a really tricky pass in the middle of her, her routine. This opening tumbling pass still very difficult. Wow. <laughs> where she was possibly going to do a double twisting double. Opted to just play it a little safe. Team for Jade has a lot more difficulty as we have mentioned that it will be coming at the Olympic trials and then of course in Tokyo <laughs> next month has already qualified has to be just a huge relief you know going into a competition like this knowing of course every competition matters but so we wait for that number but the number for suni lee and that's more than enough how about 14.7 for the effort on balance beam and that is definitely going to put her in second place fantastic they gave her all of her difficulty all of her connections spectacular she does this two more times locks into place as the second gymnast guys what a night and once again it's simone biles who wins it and we send it over to andrea Simone, an unprecedented seventh national title. You've told us in the past that you don't really focus on the hardware, but right. as you make history once again, what are the emotions tied to this title? Yeah, it's really emotional, especially going into my second time doing um, an Olympic run. It's really crazy, and I appreciate everyone that's come out to watch and support us, especially after the year we've had. So somebody on Twitter called the WCC squad the gymnastics Power Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of got a nice sound to it, right? Yes. But seriously, though, what has it meant to you to be able to share all of this with so many of your teammates and yeah. your good friends? It's meant the world, especially having the younger ones to kind of guide through the way. I've been here for so long, so to be a mentor for them has meant everything for me and to share these accomplishments and these goals. You have often said that your best memories come from when you're having fun. Yes. Being able to be here again with all of those teammates, how yeah. much fun is this? And what will you remember most from these championships? Yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun, but it's been a lot of stress too because <laughs> there is not only me, there are six of us that we brought, but it, we've just had so much fun. So what did you say to Jordan? We saw you, she was so emotional after her yeah. last routine. What did you say to her? Yeah, I told her that she had done it and she belongs to be here and we're gonna go to trials and do the exact same thing because this is what we've trained for. So I'm happy she got to go out there and show the world what she's capable of because she, she deserves it. Well, congratulations and on to trials. Thank you, yes, on to trials. <laughs> All right, Terry. Andrea, thanks, so congratulations to 
Simone Biles, a seven-time U.S. all-around champ. What a leader, too, for a young gymnast like Jordan Childs, too, training alongside by the inspirational words at an event like this. Guys, they were impressive tonight. Oh, they absolutely were. And, you know, that's exactly what makes Simone the greatest of all time, not only in her own way, but just as an incredible teammate. But look at this. Triple twisting, double back. The Biles. Make the impossible look simple. She does it all day long. used to be a rough event for her. She has transformed herself on bars. Wow. And it's not just Simone Biles. Overall, guys, I mean, we saw them compete. Many of the same gymnasts a couple of weeks ago, and you walked away saying, well, there were some mistakes. They weren't quite sharp. This week has been different, don't you think? Oh, yeah. And, and it's only, I think, going to get even better. They're going to get stronger, more confident in the next few weeks of training the next time we see them at the Olympic trials. And those are the names right there that will very much be vying for those spots. And Suni Lee, that great effort to finish up in that last rotation, able to capture that second spot. Jordan Childs, fantastic. Malibuyo, Leon Wong, the young star, and then Jade Carey. And an individual spot wrapped up already, but perhaps making the team. We'll see in a few weeks. But Simone Biles making history once again at the national championships this time here in fort worth texas the state in which she lives and trains now a seven-time u.s all-around champ so as we say goodbye reminder join us in a few weeks for the u.s olympic gymnastics trials it comes your way beginning thursday june 24th on nbc and nbc SN, and that's where the Olympic team will be named. Coming up next here on NBC, it's America's Got Talent. For Nastia Lukin, Tim Daggett, and Andrea Joyce, I'm Terry Gannon. Thanks for watching. So long, everybody, from Fort Worth.